Hi, I'm Carrie Jacobs, and today I'd like to talk about Laika, one of the first animals in space and the first dog to orbit the Earth uh, in a mission that was to pave the way for future space exploration. Um, and some of the sad truths about that mission as well. Um, so I'd like to paint a little tribute to Laika today. Uh, I've got a blank canvas here ready to go. So put up a pew and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so I've started off with a um, basic sketch of Laika. Um, actually using a the the ghetto liquid white which I used in my last video experimenting with it a little bit here see how it goes but um yeah I'm thinking um we'll just start okay so Laika was um one of quite a few dogs um taken off the streets of Moscow she was a, a mongol stray um and she and quite a few other dogs were put through, through various tests um, involving loud noises, changes in pressure, cramped environments, all the stuff that would be likely part of the, uh, the mission. From that, they chose three dogs. Laika was one of them. Um, there was Albina and Mushka, two others. So the, the mission in question was um, Sputnik 2. So after the um, success of Sputnik 1, uh, 1st of October 1957, the Soviet government wanted to continue the, um, the momentum uh, and show off their prowess by sending a living animal uh, up and to, to orbit the Earth, come back around and, and to survive in space to prove that it is possible for a living being to, to survive being in space. Um, they also wanted this to co coincide with the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution, which was about one month later, which meant yes, the, the Russian scientists had one month to develop and build Sputnik 2, um, which they did. Um, to their credit, they did. Unfortunately, that meant they had to uh, forego certain things like a system to return the ship back to Earth, which unfortunately meant they knew from the off that um, it just was, was going to be a one-way trip for uh, for well, the dog that was chosen ended up being Laika. So the training that um, the three dogs underwent involved um, being kept in increasingly smaller and smaller cages. Um, the room inside the capsule was going to be, they would have had a few inches of, of room for movement and so they had to be trained to sit very still for very long periods of time. So they were, they were, were kept in very, very small cages for, for days and days on end. Um, they were taught to eat this special nutrition gel that would be their food source during the flight. Um, they were put in uh, centrifuges to simulate the, uh, the, the strong g-forces during during takeoff and they were put in chambers where which would create you know, loud bangs and, and noises to simulate the noises that spacecraft would make during takeoff. Now he also underwent um, surgery to, to implant the, uh, the senses that would um, record uh, their, their breathing, their heart rate and, and all kinds of 
things like that during the flight to um, to ensure they're well, they're still alive, basically. I think it's worth mentioning at this point. The, um, yes, I'm aware that this looks like a complete and utter mess at the moment. Don't worry, I haven't gone mad. Um, I have a plan. Um, this is just sort of like a base coat. And now I'm going to go in and add a bit more detail. Hopefully, this will start to come together. Um, anyway, back to the story. A quite touching note was that um, one of the trainers, uh, Vladimir Yevdosky, a few days before the, um, the launch was scheduled, he took Laika home um, to, to play with his children just for one evening. So Laika could just spend an evening being a normal dog before um, so he knew that she only had a few more days to live, basically. So Laika was placed into Sputnik 2 on uh, October the 31st, 1957. Um, that's where she would spend the next three days until the, uh, the actual launch day. So on liftoff, like a heart rate doubled, uh, her respiration tripled, and um, so she was absolutely petrified, um, un understandably. Uh, it wasn't until she was weightless that um, she started to calm down, although very, very slowly, uh, much slower than, uh, than normal. Um, so it was obvious that she was under a lot of stress. Obviously <laughs> confused as to what was going on. You notice her face has changed quite a lot. That's because I was getting quite frustrated with it and I uh, had to paint it off camera. What happened next is a little bit unclear. Um, at the time, the Soviet government claimed that um, Laika was always on Earth for several days, um, at which point they euthanized her by poisoning the, her food, which would have been a, a painless, easy death within a few seconds. Um, they also, or some, some sources, claimed that she died of uh, asphyxiation, where the, her oxygen ran out and she, um, and she died from lack of oxygen. Um, it wasn't until much, much later, about 40, 40 years later, um, certain documents were declassified, and it was confirmed in 2002 by one of the scientists that, in fact, um, the system to keep the um, the cabin cool um, during the flight uh, malfunctioned, basically heating it up to about 40 degrees C. And in fact, it was between five and seven hours um, after launch um, that they lost all signs of life from, from Laika. Uh, so she would have died in extreme pain uh, cramped, scared, um, it would not have been present in the slightest.
Now you might think there was a big uproar about this um, with animal rights protests and, and so on, and, and you'd be right, there was. Um, nothing on the scale that it would be today, but even so, unfortunately, the, the press didn't really cover that angle of it. They were far more interested in the politics between the USA and Soviets. Um, so, so like his death wasn't really covered by front page news until much, much later. Which is a real shame. But since then, she has had several tributes made to her all around the world, statues and memorials. Uh, she's inspired artwork and she went on to pave the way for future space travel. So, was the sacrifice worth it? That's a difficult question to answer. I think the real tragedy though is that given more time, they almost certainly could have brought the, uh, the shuttle back safely to Earth. It's just because they were trying to do the whole thing within a month. Um, that cost life of her life. Okay, I think it's just about time to add some stars and finish this thing off. So there we are, that's my tribute to Laika, the first dog to orbit the Earth, albeit an unwilling sacrifice, but nevertheless she did pave the way for our future space endeavours. So I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did give me a thumbs up, um, if you want to see more videos like this then consider subscribing. And that's all I've got time for today, so until next time, cheerio!